I've always been fascinated by the idea of European minnows, whether that be the Faroe Islands, who are technically a part of Denmark, technically sort of sovereign on their own, um, who sit pretty much equidistant between the very northern reaches of Scotland and Iceland, or whether that be Andorra and uh, their position in between two of the biggest nations in Europe, France and Spain, or whether that be Liechtenstein, who are essentially like a little offshoot of Switzerland there. I know they're their own country, but essentially a European minnow, or whether that be San Marino, the worst team technically in the FIFA World Rankings. And so I've got a flight today and you may be able to make out the rock of Gibraltar behind me. Yes, I'm in Gibraltar for the first time. When I first had the idea of making this YouTube channel, I used to live in Australia. I used to walk around on my lunch breaks at work and a job I wasn't happy in and think about creating videos. And one of the ideas I had in those very early times was I need to investigate European minnows. And we are technically in Britain. We are right on the edge of Spain. I saw Africa flying in, the views flying in were absolutely sensational. And I was thinking, will we see any Britishisms when we come to Gibraltar? And look at that, we've already got a red post box right outside the airport. So are you from uh, Gibraltar? I'm from Morocco. You're from Morocco? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool, whereabouts? Uh, Tangier. Tangier, oh yeah. nice. And is the currency pounds or euros? Pounds. Pounds, yes. yeah, okay. Just one ticket to the top of the cable car. Amazing, thank you very much. Bye. Now we're gonna go up, see the view, see the sight, see the monkeys hopefully as well, but I think you can see the International Football Stadium from up there. Oh, I'm excited. Admit, I'm low ski scared of the monkeys now. Listen to what they said on the cable car on the way up. Absolutely beautiful ride up here, but just take a listen to this. They have sharp teeth and will bite if provoked. Please do not feed or attempt to touch them. You should place rucksacks at your front to protect your belongings. Yeah, backpack on the front, don't look them in the eye, don't feed them, all this kind of stuff. Wouldn't feed them anyway, but correct me if I'm wrong, internet. I do believe this is the only place in Britain with wild monkeys and things just don't add up here like the red letter box from earlier like the plugs there look at that normal plug but we have that to view it doesn't seem very british does it as people come around here um, i've seen a couple of monkeys knocking about we are going to go and explore this area um in a little bit and we'll get a view as well perfect thank you very much and here we've got uh, got my coffee here we've got the scran to come but um yeah i'm gonna have a look at some of the viewpoints now see if we can see the stadium we are going down there later i'm gonna see if we can see africa which should be high behind me i can see spain right now one interesting place this is where two continents almost are touching now that's gibraltar as you can see and if we zoom out look there's the rest of spain and there is morocco and i will zoom out a little bit more to give you a bit of context on where we are on the globe right now and you may be able to see why this is such an important choke point um within sort of the mediterranean britain claimed this place in the 1700s. It was ceded to Britain in the 1700s from Spain, and there's still a little bit of contention between Spain and the UK over this part of the land, but this is such an important point of Britain, just like geographically and strategically. Look, you can see like the airport there, that is where the border is. You could be able to see, yeah, that little dotted line there, that's the border with Spain. And um, any like, ship that wanted to come through here would have had to pass obviously a little piece of Britain which means that Britain controlled the choke point from the Mediterranean out to the wider world. Now it becomes even more interesting when you consider that the Suez Canal was um, created in I think the 1800s so maybe about 100 150 years after um, Britain sort of claimed this place and what ships used to have to do to tra carry goods from the east to the west or the west to the east was go all around Africa but with the invention of the Suez Canal, goods from India, from China, all started to come through here. And then through this little choke point here as well, and then up into the West and out into America, I suppose, as well. Um, and that is why over half of, I think it's over half of the maritime goods sent around the world come via Gibraltar, past Gibraltar. So look around your house, anything that's made in China was likely brought to you by a ship like that out there that's come all the way from China, all the way through Asia, the Suez Canal, through the Mediterranean, 
through this little choke point here and up to Britain. So look, there's the runway. Look, as you can see, that's where we flew into. One of the most iconic runways in the world, I feel like. Um, I've seen a lot about it before. I think it's quite a hard place for people to um, fly into, for pilots to fly into. But look, as you can see, there's the stadium down there. Might just include a clip of it from the other camera so you can actually see, but the stadium is right next to the airport, right next to the Rock of Gibraltar. I bet it looks amazing when you're there. Um, but look at it. It doesn't look like a massive, imposing, international football stadium, does it, that hosts international qualifiers? And um, interestingly, the entire league, every single team in the Gibraltar top tier play in that stadium. Name me another country in the world where that would be the case. I absolutely love where this job takes me. I mean, if you kept going that way north, you'd enter all of Europe. You've got Shakespeare. You've got the current war in Ukraine. You've got Britain and sort of the birth of Western culture. And over here, you have Nelson Mandela, incredible wildlife, current war in Sudan. This is where two continents almost collide. Look how close they are, but obviously how different things are in each continent. There we go. Monkeys there, monkeys there. They are kind of scary. They're just so unpredictable, aren't they? Um, but I have been to the monkey forest in Bali and uh, yeah, this just doesn't compare to how mental that is. But look at that. Wild monkeys in Britain. <laughs> so we're back down from the top of the rock, which is up there behind me. We've got the cable car back down and the uh, monkeys were mental on the way back down. They were like nicking cleaning products from in there, grabbing on a woman's dress. Um, I'm glad I just got out of there alive, but it is time to head to the stadium. We're meeting someone from the Gibraltar FA today. We should be able to chat to them about um, the sort of intricacies, I guess, of Gibraltar football and um, what makes it so unique and what makes them a footballing nation, basically. I mean, it's so interesting just bowling around here. I mean, there's a pub over there called the Trafalgar. There's Union Jacks everywhere. There's red letterboxes. What else? They use pounds. I take it the residents of this street were out celebrating the, uh, the coronation over the last week or two. And here it is, one of the most intriguing international stadiums in the world. A stadium that hosts an entire league system and a stadium that, look, UEFA Nations League. My name is Steven Gonzalez. I'm the comms and marketing manager for the Gibraltar FA. Thank you so much for showing me around. What a unique stadium this is. Could you just explain a little bit about football in Gibraltar that people may not have heard about before? Gibraltar is a place that absolutely loves, loves its football, whether it's on the pitch playing it, whether it's kids in the street with their mates or at the local estates in their, in their football pitches or street football courts, as, as, as you've probably seen around the world, down to um, people in the bars and, and uh, places watching football on a Saturday afternoon, whether yep. it's um, Spanish football, the Premier League, um, anything. We just absolutely love it. And, I'm a big cricket fan, as okay. an insider, and it's a bit like, I don't know if you know, cricket is in India, where it's where everybody lives and breathes it, everybody talks it, yeah. and um, yeah, it's it's what um, drives drives the the um, passions and and um, and pride, the people, if you like, of yeah. people in Jib, yeah. I walked through the the yeah. town centre. Lots of Union Jacks. Have the people of Gibraltar been out celebrating the coronation recently? Ma massively. That's why the bunting is is still up. And look, people in Gibraltar, f people say when when they come from the UK or from England specifically, they say that people in Gibraltar are more British than than the British. If you okay. like, we there's fish and chip restaurants everywhere. Yep. Um, you can get Marks and Spencers. Pint, Marks I saw. And Spencer yeah. High Street, Morrison Supermarket. You yep. get your pint of beer on the high street. Nice. Bacon and eggs for breakfast in the morning. So, so yeah. The only difference is we're about a couple of thousand miles away from the mainland, but um, but yeah, we are totally, totally British. And so the football then. It was 2013 that you became a UEFA nation. Yeah. How did that come about, and what was football like in Gibraltar before you became a UEFA nation? It came about literally because of um, years of fighting 
um, to become UEFA and then ultimately FIFA members in the courts. Both applications ended up in the Court of Arbitration for Sport. Both times they ruled in Gibraltar's favour and um, eventually both in 2013 UEFA and in 2016 FIFA had no um, reason not to mm -hmm. object to Gibraltar's membership of both of the both the, the regional confederation UEFA and the governing body of world football which is FIFA. It was quite a, a, a difficult process because of the uniqueness of Gibraltar's application to UEFA especially sometime and since then they've changed the way that um, that um, countries are sort of viewed by them in order to admit new members. In fact there's only been one since us which is Kosovo um, but uh, yeah literally since then Gibraltar's, Gibraltar moved overnight literally from a from an amateur amateur footballing world if you like into a more modern and professional footballing world and what is the future for the national team of Gibraltar the immediate future is we're playing against France in June at the Estadio Algarve and, and um, hosting yet again another another massive um, a massive international country but the future has to be and is massively on, on growing the game on and off the pitch both the men's game the women's game futsal um, Reinvestment, in, sorry, investment in our youth yep. programs and structures to ensure that um, the next and future generations of Gibraltarian footballers get the best opportunities they have to show themselves and show off their talents, whether it's domestically, internationally, or at whatever level each individual footballer can progress to himself or herself. And so those big international games, you say France, there, you wouldn't play those home games here. You'd have moment, to play them in Algarve. Since 2018, 2017, we've been able to play here. Now our exemption. Um, from UEFA to use this facility for full-scale men's international um, fixtures in terms of European and World Cup qualifiers has run out. Um, but on the flip side to that, we are in the process of um, redoing the whole state, the whole facility here. Where yep. within the next two or three years, there'll be a whole new national stadium um, on this site where we're stood up at the moment. And Amazing. Hopefully, you'll be able to come back and see that. So are these some of the moments of the national team here then? Is that against Liechtenstein maybe? What's that? And so you have won a few um, international qualifiers and Nations League games, haven't you? Nations League games, yeah. Yeah. This was the best one. Which one was here? Armenia. Oh, that, was that your first ever win I read earlier? This has got to be the most unique stadium in the world in that the entire league yep. of the top tier play in this one stadium. Is there another stadium in the world where that's the case or country? I go, I go a bit further than that. It's not just the entire men's domestic league, the women's league, the youth leagues from under 14s up when they play on a full-size football pitch is all played on this pitch. Hence, it has to be a very, very um, good 4G AstroTurf yep. um, synthetic field. Yep. And so on the clubs then, would they, the winner of the league, qualify for the Champions League? The league qualifies for the Champions League. How have the clubs stage? done in Europe? Um, to be fair, uh, our, one of our teams, Lincoln Red Imps, qualified for the Europa Conference League. Not, not this season. This last season, um, they went through the qualifying rounds and got through to the playoffs, where they won their home. They qualified on this stadium and they got through to play against FC Copenhagen, Pauk wow. from Greece and um, Slovan Bratislava. I've been to all three of those stadiums, so, yeah. Oh, nice. So, yes. Um, and West Ham are about to, or close to getting into the final of that competition. So, yeah. so yes, you do have access to European competition. Didn't they play winning. Celtic? They played Celtic in a Champions League qualifier again here. They won, they won the, didn't they? They yeah. won the game here, 1-0. Yeah. They scored in that goal wow. late on. Against Brendan Rodgers, Celtic. Brendan Rodgers' first first game as Celtic manager was yeah. here. Wow. Yeah. And he sure lost. He won't forget it. And so, do you have a message for people who? I obviously watch a lot of football in yeah. Scotland and in England. Why should people come to maybe Gibraltar or countries similar to this to watch football? It's a little bit different, but why should people come and see football here? Because of the passion that the players play with. You know, um, they, the, it's the whole David and Goliath story every time Gibraltar step onto the pitch. Every time a Gibraltar national team step on the pitch, whether it's an under 17, under 15, a women's international, even indoor football futsal which is quite big in Gibraltar um, and the pride that, that the players have and for, for representing their nation and giving, their, giving it their all. 
Um, it's you can't beat that. What does that stadium remind you of? <laughs> Look, you got the Rock of Gibraltar right there. One of the best views of a stadium we've ever seen. Probably the best international view you've ever seen. But like, what does it remind you of? Does it remind you of like a a non-league ground? That's what I'd say. It sort of feels like. I think it was built maybe 40 odd years ago. This place. And it doesn't hold too many people and there's a running track around it but by the sounds of things the new stadium is going to be incredible they can't play any big qualifiers here just now sadly but they have played quite a lot of games here um but yeah anyway i need to negotiate the traffic right now and find my way to the apartment i'm knackered i was up so early this morning people of the internet is this the only place in britain where people drive on the right hand side of the road so here's the room, let's have a look at the bathroom first. Vlogger in the mirror. That's pretty good, we'll take this. Seems pretty nice and clean, kind of modern as well. And look, we have a studio here today. The best part is, not my shoes on the floor, not my phone, not my camera, not my stuff already strewn around everywhere. Look, we can cook if we so please. We have a TV with English channels, I've just heard, from the man who checked me in. But, sorry if you can hear any background noise, Got the AC on just now. Let's head outside to the balcony and look at that. Oh my God, what a view. This could be the best view we've ever had from a place on this channel, maybe, potentially. I'm absolutely shattered after today. Got up at what, 3 a.m. again? I did this in Poland recently as well, didn't I? I got up so early. I need to start catching flights that are just normal times of the day, but yeah, look at that. What a view we have from the bed today. I'm gonna do a bit of editing right now. Um, got some stuff to do and just kick back in the air con. The chase and tipping point should come on later, so it's gonna be a great day. Right, I'll catch you later on. Good morning, Gibraltar. I cannot tell you how good it is just to be cutting about in a t-shirt and shorts. It has been so long, minus the sunburn. It's been pretty good, actually. I absolutely love this place. The weather's been amazing. Everybody's so nice. Um, and my balcony was on the 11th floor up on that building behind me. And let me tell you, the view of the rock and just chilling. Watched Liverpool v Leicester yesterday. They had that on the TV in there. Um, so yeah, great stay overall in Gibraltar. It's never long enough, is it? It's in Poland for a day. I've been in Gibraltar for a day. Um, but we're heading back to the stadium now. And here we are back at the stadium. We are about to interview one of the international players for Gibraltar. Have I ever interviewed a current international player before? I'm not sure that I have. They're going to be playing France soon as well. So I'm really, really excited to hear what he has to say about football here in Gibraltar. I'm uh, Jace Olivero, I'm 24 years of age from Gibraltar and I'm a um, player for Europa FC and for the national team of uh, Gibraltar. Amazing, and you're up there, we can see you there, the number 12 next to the goalkeeper. Yeah. We're gonna talk about your international career outside in just a second, but how is the club football here for a player like yourself? Oh, it's brilliant, and I think it's something that's been growing um, um, year after year, and I think that's been shown at local football and, and also at international level with the national team, um, which are, you know, who are taking huge strides in a, in a positive way and it's really really good to see and each year the league is getting stronger players are getting stronger and that's just um, benefiting football in general in Gibraltar Are there a lot of rivalries between the teams because considering you all play in this stadium every game is a local derby? Yeah of course there's obviously a lot to play for the Champions League spot the Europa Conference League spots as well um, the teams invest a lot of time a lot of uh, hard training um, and everyone wants to, to win uh, everything and wants to, to finish in the best possible position. So yeah. there's always really good uh, rivalries, which at the end of the day is just good for football in, in general. And we are in the home dressing room right now for the international team. How does it work for the clubs? If you're scheduled to be the home team, do you get to use this dressing room? And if you're away, you'd use the other one? Yeah, it's, um, each, each fixture will have a, a team will be um, classified as the home and or, or the away and, and depending on that you'll it'll depend which uh, changing room you, you get.
thankfully I've been able to to achieve a high number of, of caps till till this day and I'm re really really grateful to be able to step on this pitch every time and be able to represent my nation and and my family and and all those that I work hard for so you've obviously accumulated so many caps within your career what has been the best game would you say that you've played in maybe the best result or maybe you've played against some yeah. huge players I just say I wouldn't be able to just say one I think obviously my my debut was a was a special one being here at home in front of our home crown in front of my my family that was uh, something truly special um, when we had our, our game against uh, Armenia where we got our first win that was historical um, obviously winning the the Nations League campaign was another historical moment so thankfully um, as a result of all the hard work and, and everything we've put in on a daily basis, um, I think we've had very a lot of magical moments and historical moments. And you've only been uh, playing, I think, international football since 2013 as a country. So it's 2023 now, it's 10 years. Yeah. How do you see international football progressing for Gibraltar? Oh, massively. As I mentioned earlier, I think uh, with each year, with each game, um, the national team is, is growing. And that's uh, down to all the hard work from, from everyone involved, from, from the players, from the coaching team, from everyone behind the scenes who's just pushing and and just helping the national team get better and better and I think it's it's just a true sign of the, the special family that we've we've developed here. And you've got a game coming up against France pretty soon. You must be really excited to play that fixture. And we've got a plane, I think, yeah, there's the runway right there. Another uh, unique point about yeah. this ground, isn't it? You've got the runway there and the rock behind you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're playing France very soon. Is there any players that you're looking forward to coming up against or? No, you obviously um, want to come up against the, the very, very best. Um, and that's what we work for, to, to compete against the very best and to um, you know, be able to fight against the, the best players and the best nations. And that's what we look forward to, that's what we're hungry for and that's what um, we'll, we'll give everything for. What sensational access and what an amazing stadium. The Rock of Gibraltar there and this incredible international stadium. It's so mad, all the different intricacies about it that I've told you about, with it being an international ground, um, with them being quite a new UEFA nation, with all the club teams playing here as well. Um, but look, as you can see, we're on a running track right now. Um, the old stand over there, the seats are slightly faded, as you can see, it's an old ground, but yes, there are plans to build a completely new one. The running track will be gone. Um, there'll be new floodlights. So there's an issue with the floodlights. Once they start building, they've got to take them down. Just the height of them and it's right next to an airport so as you can imagine like that obviously is quite a tough thing to get around building wise I suppose um, however yeah they are going to build a new stadium with um, floodlights connected to the stand I do believe um, but it's amazing because some of the players are training on the pitch right now as you may be able to hear and see um, but yeah it's quite intriguing just because um, it's about the same size population wise as San Marino slightly less here by about a thousand or two thousand there's a new census to come out soon so that could change um, but in terms of like the size of the town it's smaller than Kilmarnock or in, in size of the whole country even it's smaller than the town of Kilmarnock um, by quite a few thousand people so imagine like Kilmarnock the people there competing on an international stage it's absolutely mad anyway i'm getting completely sunburned out here i've not been in the sun like this for so long and i'm so underprepared but we've got to get around to the airport look at this there can't be too many places around the world where you gotta walk literally through where the planes take off this is literally we just saw an easyjet plane take off and then they open a barrier you can walk through the stadium is literally just through there international football stadium the airport's over there you walk across the runway to get there so Gibraltar, where are they in the FIFA World Rankings? Well, they are actually Europe's second technically worst team in the FIFA World Rankings. There is only San Marino below them who are actually technically the worst country in the world. Um, Ellis Platten's been there, Airway Days did a fantastic video there, so do go and check that out. But yeah, Gibraltar, they are below the likes of Laos, Liechtenstein, someone we mentioned earlier, Seychelles, Eritrea, Pakistan, Tonga, Djibouti, Bangladesh, Brunei, so there are some teams above them that technically are probably beatable, but obviously like the FIFA World Ranking System is a bit of a weird system. Obviously, like the Cayman Islands aren't going to play as good at opposition as what Gibraltar would be. 
but Cayman Islands are above Gibraltar in the FIFA World Rankings. What an absolutely fascinating place for football this is. The stadium, the rock, I mean the rock stadium, where else have we been that have rock stadiums? Uh, Dumbarton, we've been to Kevin Druids in Wales and then there's Braga and this is really in with those stadiums there, like the, the type of stadium it is. Um, yeah, and we spoke to a couple of people there who um, obviously Jace who plays and Stephen from the FA. Um, just amazing to hear their thoughts on things and 2013 they started playing football in UEFA. Only Kosovo are newer than them um, when it comes to football within UEFA and I do believe that Gibraltar in terms of population size like I mentioned just there at the end in the ground are actually the smallest UEFA nation. Even San Marino have a couple of thousand more people. There is a new census coming out apparently, but um, yeah, just absolutely intriguing, isn't it? How a tiny little place like Gibraltar with 10,000 less people than Kilmarnock competes on the international stage and they'll be playing against Mbappe soon. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do remember to leave a like and let me know in the comment section below where you'd like me to go next. I know I just mentioned a few of the rock stadiums there. Some of my favourites have been, you know, Braga, Dunbarton, Kevin Druid. So I'll leave a couple of them on screen. If you do like this type of stadium, then do check those videos out too. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.